This is the eighth recording on the Constitution on the Liturgy from Vatican Council II. And we will now talk a little bit about the liturgical year. This is an important part of the OCIA sequence, is going over the liturgical year to show the what and the why. But what they did in the council is they made this a separate chapter in order to emphasize the importance and explain some of the reforms that were going to happen. And these have happened. They did say that they were open to a permanent date for Easter, but that was the last article and uh, it's, it's essentially a dead issue. So the church is conscious that she must celebrate and we're all back to the original point of Jesus Christ, who is the spouse of the church, and recalls the actions of God every year. Every week on the day which she's called the Lord's Day, which we know is Sunday, she remembers the Lord's resurrection. That is the feast that we celebrate every time we come to Mass but particularly on Sundays. And she also celebrates it once a year in the Sacred Triduum, Good Friday, Holy Thursday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Within the year, she also goes through the life of Christ, from his incarnation to celebrate March 25th, his birth December 25th, and then the Easter season triduum, followed by Pentecost, and within that, of course, the Ascension. So she's opening up the riches of the church to the people and reminding them of the work that Jesus Christ did at the direction of the Father and of the sending of the Holy Spirit, which makes us all into missionaries. So in 103, they point out that the Mother of God, Mary, has an inextricable separation to Jesus, and therefore her feasts are in the liturgical year. Not as equal to her sons, but as supportive of everything that Jesus did for our salvation and sanctification. And the church also has memories of the martyrs, the other saints like the virgins, the doctors of the church, and the special saints like St. Francis, St. Dominic, St. Benedict, and the Eastern saints as well, John Chrysostom, and the like. So we celebrate the passage of the saints from earth to heaven, their day, ordinarily, the day we celebrate is the day of their falling asleep in Christ. And then in 105, we also see that the liturgical year has a didactic function and a spiritual exercise function with the people. So there are pious practices for soul and body. So for instance, in the Lenten season, we frequently fast and abstain from meat, and there are other penances that are recommended to us. So, the decrees start in 106. Now, these are specific ways in which they accomplish the objectives in 102 through 105, like they've done before. So, the first thing is, on the eighth day, which of course is, is the Lord's Day Sunday, they they really emphasize this. This is the day for the Lord, the day of the Lord. We are bound to come together into one place. This is one thing that especially Pope John, Saint John Paul II, of heavy memory, um, he really emphasized, he had a whole encyclical on the Lord's Day, which we should all read so that by hearing the word of God and taking part in Eucharist, every Catholic comes together 
in their parish church on Sunday. This needs to be really coming back into the forefront, and hopefully this three-year cycle with the Blessed Eucharist formation and emphasis will bring people back to celebrating on Sundays with each other. And so the, uh, the other thing, of course, is on Sunday, we're not supposed to treat that as any other weekday. In fact, uh, in my case, our, our family, uh, my wife and I, we abstain from any commercial enterprise on Sundays. We don't, uh, we don't go shopping. That gives the people who are running the stores an opportunity to be with their families. We should, we should still be closing all but the emergency stores on, on Sunday. Okay, 107 says that the seasons are going to be preserved. So we've got Advent, we've got the Christmas season, we've got um, Lent and Easter seasons back to back, followed by Pentecost and the Sundays after Pentecost, which for some purpose are now called ordinary time, which they're certainly not ordinary. They should be still called the Sundays after Pentecost. In 108, then the faithful have to be directed primarily towards what we call the Dominical Feasts, the Feasts of Jesus in the celebration. So, the proper of the time, which means the season that you're in and any celebrations for that, they always trump the sanctoral seats, feasts, um, except the, the feasts of Blessed Virgin Mary, which might be moved a day or something. But to, to when, for instance, in March, frequently we have the Triduum on top of the Feast of the Incarnation, the Annunciation on March 25th. And in that case, they push the celebration of the Incarnation off until that next week after Easter. Now Lent is set off by a twofold character because what's going on there is that our catechumens and candidates are being prepared for the final sacraments of initiation that they have not received. And so uh, at, at one parish mass, and almost all parishes, they use a particular cycle of readings that focuses on their formation. But also, all of us are going to be uh, confronted with the opportunity to fast and abstain to pray and to give alms, because that's one of the focuses of Lent, is giving of ourselves to the church, to others, and to our own spiritual growth. So, both the baptismal elements and the penitential elements are celebrating during the Lenten season. And in 110, they say that penance should not only be inside an individual, but also external and social, and uh, that, for instance, we, uh, we have uh, Knights of Columbus, uh, the, uh, the various chapters in each parish frequently uh, encourage folks to come to eat the Friday meal together, and it's a fish fry, which is really traditional. But there are, there are other ways in which penance and prayer are put together, like the Stations of the Cross. And, Paschal Fast, let us be kept sacred. That is, on Good Friday, uh, some people even eat nothing. But there should be great care taken to have very little food on that day, and even the next day, so that Sunday then is a... Is a uh, joyful feast, not only of the soul, but also the body. Uh, here in 111, they talk about the celebration of the saints and the relics, and also say that uh, the feasts 
commemorating the mysteries of salvation have to take prominence. Next chapter is in chapter 6, Sacred Music, and that will be covered in my next video.